This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Funland. Ooh, and Fairy Floss. It's cotton candy. You cannot grant other drivers the right of way. People still try to pet the fluffy cows and it's like baby cakes. Yeah. That is a foolish move. Something's not cool. Ron Swanson ain't doing his job over at Parks and Rec. It should be like Mardi Gras, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where you just toss them. I don't if like that it. means we have to go to Beer Fest this oh, weekend. Oh, no. How terrible. IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Thanks so much for joining us on this Memorial Day 2024 episode. Coming up, you've heard of cicadas. What about Mormon crickets? Ooh, unpleasantly crunchy. We tried the Grandma McFlurry. Pleasantly crunchy. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Also tried some gators and taters, Mm, some entertainment coming to Idaho Falls, some fun things that opened uh, this past week. Mm -hmm. And is there something going on with Friday night flag football in the city of Idaho Falls? Uh, It looks like... I don't know if we're going to get in the middle of this little bitch fight here, but uh, there's there's something happening. Get out your tinfoil. There's a conspiracy. Hey, Carly, what's the last thing to go through a cicada's mind when it hits your windshield? Um, Probably like, oh, no, a windshield. It's ass. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, <laughs> that does make sense. That joke will never get old. <laughs> it's a good one. I like uh. it. That, you know, I feel so dumb because I think I've heard a variation of that joke and I should have seen that coming, but... <laughs> Damn. Okay. It's so violent. <laughs> yeah, kind of. To start off to the show with <laughs> something graphic. Yeah, you know, I've heard a similar one. It's like, um, what did the fish say when it hit a bri- when it hit a concrete wall? Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And we don't have cicadas here. They're mostly, you know, Midwest. Oh, thank goodness, because they freak me out. But you know what we do have here. Are Mormon mm. crickets. Yes. Yeah. And do you remember when we went to, I think it was Utah last, and we saw a whole bunch of them outside of that gas station? Mm-hmm. Just splattered. <laughs> yeah. They Gosh, hit your windshield. They were gross. And I guess they're not as bad as like <clears throat> love bugs in Florida. Google that one if you want. Yeah. Like, and they have acidic blood. So they, you, you got to wash them off quick or they'll, they'll melt your paint. Your I don't know. No, not, I don't, not through the car. I don't want to exaggerate, well. but. I guess they're a big pain in the ass, but uh, crazy. Mormon crickets are in Idaho, Utah, and Nevada, mm-hmm. and they're swarming again. This is about the time of year they swarm. And look at this. Now, this video is from IDOT, the Idaho Department of Transportation, uh-huh. two years ago. Watch this for a second. They're using a snow plow Just gross. to clean them off the road. And do you hear that Ooh. crunching? That's either ah. the crunching of the crickets or the scraping <sighs> of the blade. Blade on the asphalt. Uh. I'm, I'm hoping it's that because so both of them give me those like heebie-jeebie shivers where you get like the goosebumps and stuff. But uh-huh. ugh, I don't like it. I don't mm. like it. Fresh cricket tacos. I mean, realistically, with all the cicadas and crickets... I think it's even more of a sign that it's time to switch to insect I, protein. I will never become an insectivore. I couldn't. I would uh, I would just, probably starve. Yeah. Like, you know, here's the thing. I think I could do it if it was powdered and, like, added to stuff. Even if I knew it was in there, I think I could handle that because it's the texture that would freak me out the most. Well, it's the you idea. Know? And we're going to – let's see. We had – this past <clears throat> week we had gator. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that. We had a turkey egg today. We did, and it was really good. From the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market. And some goat milk. And some goat milk. So I'm kind Mm -hmm. of getting past my, you know. Yeah. I'm kind of getting past it a little bit. Right. I get that. But I guess Mormon crickets are neither crickets. uh, They're more like the Katie did family. Oh, really? And And I don't think they're Mormon. Well, you don't know. But they <laughs> don't assume. But they are the crickets. They are the locusts or the, the whatever. The, the, they they are the plague that uh, were featured in the miracle of the gulls. Oh, okay. Eighteen forty eight. Yeah, wow. when when the seagulls came down and <gasps> right. ate all the crickets and saved the crop that year. Right. Yeah, yeah. these are these are the same ones. See, and everyone kind of shits on seagulls. <laughs> yeah, everyone kind of yeah. shits on seagulls, but I like seagulls. I like seagulls too. I think they're nice. Everybody calls them the the rats of the rats, rats of the of sea, flying rats. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with magpies. Everyone hates magpies, and I get that they shit everywhere. But really, I think they're kind of pretty birds, and I don't mind having them around. 
I was sitting in my car once in a park in Salt Lake City waiting for the fireworks to mm-hmm. start. And um, it's in Sugar House. What park is that? Oh, Sugar House Park, I think. Oh. But um, we had gotten some chicky nuggies. Ooh, yum. And there's a couple seagulls flying around, and <laughs> I, I threw one out at the window. And God, that's kind of like making them eat their own cousin. I, until I re- thought about it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you're feeding fowl to fowl. Yeah, that's kind of f***ed up. <laughs> I mean, I know that birds tend to be more cannibalistic than you know, people obviously, but yeah. Well, and I imagine a lot in nature, just like last week's bear mm-hmm. with the ducklings in the zoo oh, enclosure. So a lot of them are just opportunistic yeah. feeders. Yeah. I've seen a horse eat a, a little chicky before. Yeah. Have you seen that video? I've heard of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Oh, and you were talking about how dolphins were assholes. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Pelicans are too. Oh yeah. The one that tried to eat the duckling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully they saved that duckling. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, I was actually just talking to someone to like just yesterday about how I wish that more documentary crews would just step in and help out if they see that something bad's happening. You're not supposed to. I know they're not supposed to, but here's the thing. They don't have to film them helping. They just also don't have to film like, I don't know, baby penguins freezing to death. All right. So hit that like and subscribe. Tell a friend. We're everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. In your house. Double tap that. And, uh, and help a, a couple people out, if you would. And um, let's get straight to the follow-ups. Mm-hmm. Gators and taters. Oh, it was good. That was a nice night. So you made this recipe called, um, let's see, alligator sauce piquant. piquant. Yeah. It's, I thought it was sauce piquant. I, I, whatever. It's I French for How hot it? sauce. <laughs> yeah. I basically just, it, it's just a fancy word for soup. We got two pounds <laughs> yeah. of alligator tenderloin from mm-hmm. the Louisiana Crawfish Company. Right. And I would say the texture is sort of in between steak and chicken. Yeah, I would agree. Sort of like lamb is. Yeah, I think that's a good good comparison. Maybe slightly more on the chicken side than the steak side, but yeah. yeah. You made the observation that it was a little briny. Yeah, it had a little bit of a fishy flavor to it, but it was also like, it was like... chicken flavored and then 10% fish flavored. So here's the recipe for the sauce piquant. (laughs) Sauce piquant item. (laughs) We're not French. (laughs) And here's what it looked like. uh, And just go ahead and either ignore or admire Mm -hmm. Carly's frilly pink charger (laughs) plates. I love charger plates. Charger plates is a new term I've (laughs) learned since meeting Carly. (laughs) It's a plate that goes under your plate. It's. For decoration. It just looks nice. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I know you think that they're stupid. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, you find it's, Carly has so many dishes. <laughs> I really don't. I have a pretty normal amount of dishes, <laughs> you know? Okay. You have so many dishes from a guy who has None. Sam's Cub <laughs> Club paper plates in his <laughs> cupboard and that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I actually do sort of admire the way that you live because it's so efficient. But oh, yeah. Also, so we, we always used paper plates when I was a kid, too. And I'm, it makes sense. Yeah. But then anytime I had, like, guests over and stuff, we didn't have, like, a nice matching set. Mm. And I was always like, man, this looks stupid. We should have, like, nice dishes. Well, and Sam's has um, – oh, they already have fireworks, by the way. Already? You know, the lame ones that, uh, that, <laughs> like that the, you don't have to get from Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> the poppets right. and some, I don't know, confetti things. Right. But um, they also have seasonal paper plates. Every time, Like every time I walk in the door. Right. Yeah. So I got Carly some watermelon ones. I love those, by the way. They're super cute. So we spent, I think we've mentioned, I spent thirty nine ninety nine on the alligator tenderloins, two mm-hmm. pounds. And then the shipping was 60 bucks. And I'm like, I'm halfway through. Just do it. Right, which you know, I'm impressed. This you show can do was that. already losing money. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll expense that too. Right, <laughs> and then I realized, oh, there's a couple of joints here in Idaho Falls or surrounding areas where we could have gone. Well, where you can get alligator that's already cooked. Right, but if you want to cook it yourself, there's not really anywhere to get raw alligator. Right, and, yeah. and by the way, before we put the alligator in the sauce piquant. Mm-hmm. We um, took a couple of pieces aside and fried them up Mm -hmm. just Just in some butter. Yeah, nothing else. Because I was like, okay, if we're going to do this, I'm going to do this. Right. Yeah, you wanted to get the full experience of the flavor. Yeah. But Frosty Gator has alligator as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and BJ's Bayou and Roberts. I always forget about them. We should I go. Know. Here's the thing. Every time I go to the fair, I always have to stop and look at their menu because they have all kinds of great seafood stuff there. And I love seafood. Honestly, like crawfish are one of my favorites. Yeah. I really like them. I They've got all that crawfish. I don't know if you could eat them. I don't know if I could. I've yeah. gone diving for them before, night diving. That's oh, fun. really? Yeah, you you shine a flashlight in their eyes and then bring your hand around from the back. Oh. And then you put them in your netted bag. Oh. Yeah. Tricky. I like that. They're sort of like, you've heard deer in headlights. Right. There's also crawfish, <laughs> crawfish in headlights. flashlights. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. It works. And I wonder if BJ's Bayou is going to be at Beer Fest, the Mountain Brewers... Beer Fest. Ooh. This Saturday, June 1st, noon to five at Sandy Downs. Oh, can you believe it's already almost June? Get your tickets and your designated driver for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, BJ's Bayou has what? Deep fried snap and gator bites, shrimp po' boys, crawfish etouffee. I love that. Oysters, that fish. so good. All that kind of I stuff. love so, oysters. So if you, if you do want to, if you've been listening and we've been making you hungry for gator, mm-hmm. which I doubt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a couple places in town you can just go. Yeah. I do think next we're going to try frog legs. And and I think BJ's Bayou has those. I think they do too. And I think I'd rather try them from a restaurant. No offense. No, it's not about you or your cooking. It's about, I just want to sit down and have it on my plate. I don't want to buy, like... <clears throat> right, you don't want to go through the hassle. I tried buying them from Winco, and then I just kind of went through a... It's a mental thing. I right. went through like a... That's a big frog. And then I'm picturing the frogs. And I don't want to picture the frog. I don't picture a chicken when I eat chicken. Right. I get that. If it helps, I'd be happy to go and buy them and prepare them without you even having to set eyes upon it. <sighs> I'll give you a definite maybe. Or we'll just try BJ's Bayou. That's cool with me. I don't if mind. that means we have to go to Beer Fest this oh, weekend. Oh, no. How terrible. Then we have to go. <laughs> I wonder how frog legs would pair with a uh, McDonald's Grandma McFlurry. Ooh. Uh, probably not great, but tried it. They're good. Like it's awesome. The grandma McClurry rocks. They're amazing. And I have to go get another one before they go. Oh, I know. I don't know how limited time that, uh, that deal is. I know. That's what I hate. You know, I, mm, I wish that there were ways that you could order it once they're done with them too. You know, like kind of like the Starbucks secret menu, like you can go in and order this, this and that. And it makes a thing and it makes a, this thing, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, I'm really sad about it because it's so freaking good. And the butterscotch in it, I love that it's like this crumbly texture. I kind of thought it was going to be a hard candy. Yes. And it was going to like stick to your teeth and be like hard to chomp on, especially frozen. It almost tasted like candied walnuts to, yeah. to some degree, but they're just little butterscotch cr- crunchies. It was but like they're kind of soft crunchies. It was they're like not if Werther's, you took, Werther's crunchy. Right. It was like if you took the outside of a candied walnut like butterscotch candy walnut. Yeah, the walnut. stuff that comes on it. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, and just made that a crumble. I kind of think that they're like sugar clusters. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what they, yeah, because I, I pulled one out to kind of look at it. Uh-huh. And like It's just a little white crumble of something. Butterscotch flavored crumbles, butterscotch flavored syrup, and vanilla reduced fat ice cream. I know, I thought that was a nice touch. And the cute cups are pink and red mm-hmm. and signed XOXO Grandma. Which I thought was adorable. The McDonald's logo is surrounded by a little lace doily thing. Yeah. <laughs> Crocheted mm-hmm. looking yeah. design. Yeah. And they're 600 calories a piece. Mm-hmm. So we split one. Right. So we only got 300 calories. And realistically, it was more like 400 for me and 200 for you because <laughs> I did kind of hog it. <laughs> well, and remember, like a plain vanilla pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream is 330 calories. Right. I think I would rather have one of these things. Oh. Than a pint of Ben and Jerry's. By far. (laughs) Oh, man. So good. So good. Rave reviews from over here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most people who've had it have really enjoyed it. And I think the McDonald's, isn't the McDonald's on hit 24 hours or did they stop I believe it is. No, I think it is still. But I'm thinking. I've definitely stopped there after the station before. I'm trying to lose weight for a very important wedding coming up in June. Right, right. like 20 days. I know, same. (laughs) But um, I might have to do like a. 1 a.m. snack, sniggity snack. I like that. The BYU Idaho college students apparently line up at McDonald's at um, 11:59 on a Sunday night. Oh, really? So that they can order after the fast day is over uh. at 12:01. <laughs> like that's what I. That's just Funny. a rumor I've heard. Huh? 
we we say all sorts of rumors about Rexburg here. Yeah. Because we don't live there. Yeah. We, we don't deal in facts. <laughs> Another <laughs> follow-up. I didn't realize how expensive journey tickets were. Yeah. Holy cow. I kind of was shocked. I was a little sticker shocked by those. So uh, they're, they're 99 and 129. That doesn't seem too bad for me. Mm-hmm. Then the VIP standing right in front of the stage, 299. Right. And you have to stand the whole time. Yeah. Like that doesn't feel very v- VIP to me. So I asked know? one of the guys that put that helped put the show together and I'm like, what's the deal with the ticket prices? And he said, okay, look, I, you know, I've seen the comments too. people saying I'm not paying that for a fair act. Okay. First of all, journey isn't a fair act just to, well, but they are an act that's right. going to be at a fair, <laughs> but what they're doing is they're bringing their full stage show. It's their 50th anniversary tour that they're doing this year. Oh, with, oh shit. With okay. other, yeah, like, like eighties bands and stuff. All right. That's kind of cool. So, and they're bringing the full tour to the Eastern Idaho State Fair. So I just huh. want to mention that. I'm kind of shocked that they were able to get that for the fair. Right. Like, yeah. that's actually a little impressive. Like he mentioned, it's not, um, I, I don't want to speak out of school. It's not, they were, they were more than $500,000 and less than a million to get. So if you divide that by the number of seats or standing room available there, mm-hmm. the math works out to about 120 bucks a ticket. Right, right. <laughs> so, okay, that may, that's fair. Yeah, I get it. I just wanted to mention that. Right. I sometimes get insider information and I think they know <laughs> damn well I'm going to share it on this show. So <laughs> I don't want to waste it. I don't blame you. Yeah, right. I totally get it. Also, we got Theo Vaughn tickets. I know. That was really cool of you. Thank you. So he had a show June 29th mm-hmm. at the Mountain America Center, the Mac. And then he added, it sold out. He added mm-hmm. a second one June 27th. We're going to be like, I don't know, 12 rows back. Super close. I'm really excited about Center that. Center on the right. It'll mm-hmm. be great. And I've, I've watched, um, <laughs> boy, if you want to watch something, um, if, if this show is okay for you to handle, then go ahead and YouTube Theo Vaughn doing a set on Mushrooms. <laughs> wow, that guy just he the thing that I haven't been able to put into words until after watching that is he's authentic. Right. You yeah, know, which is honestly that's what I really look for in a content creator. You know, like anyone can come up with a funny story, but like the people who are authentic and take things that actually happened and find a way to make that funny, I think those are the more impressive ones and frankly the better ones. Yeah. Yeah. And and some of the shit that comes out of his mouth, some of the stories <laughs> you don't know if he's being real. Like he like it's stuff that you would only say on a therapist's couch, right? Right. It, it, especially in the YouTube thirty minute set that I just mentioned, right? And doesn't he also have his own podcast too? He does. Funny. Yeah. This past weekend, I just watched mm-hmm. episode five hundred five, which was a oh, great nice. episode to watch mm-hmm. because it's a solo show, no guests, just him, and he's kind Man. of reflecting on the first. 500 episodes in the in the seven years he's been doing podcasting. Damn, that's a long time. He's a really interesting guy. Yeah. The, the more I watch him, the more I like him. I didn't know what mm-hmm. to think of him at first. Right. Uh, also, uh, speaking of stand-up comedy, Rodney Norman coming June 21st to the Downtown Events Center. Oh, really? You know, Rodney Norman is that old guy that leaned into the microphone and was like, hey. Hey, you know, you can just do stuff. Like you don't need anybody's permission or anything. You just you, you just kind of come up with weird stuff you want to go do. You just go do it. He's so right. Yeah, is the thing like no one's really gonna stop you. That's at the downtown event center, the deck, June twenty first, Lincoln Post. So Memorial Day weekend, we're doing this episode on Memorial Day. This is the most military <laughs> thing I could find. I wanted to honor our. I thought it was great. <laughs> military and yeah, and you know I, I like to um, I like two things about. Memorial Day weekend. One, three-day weekend party. Always great. Hot dogs on the grill, maybe some Virgin River if you're feeling fancy. Right. Or some gator. But I also do like to take a moment and reflect. Well, especially because you do come from a military family. Yes. You know? I, I think my uh, my bio dad uh, was like a civilian who worked for the military. Mm-hmm. And then my stepdad was in the Air Force. My son is in the Marines. Uh, he just had his change of command ceremony. That's kind of a big deal. He's, uh-huh. he's like a captain. How did? Totally <laughs> skipped a generation, by the way. Totally. My older brother is a rocket scientist for Raytheon <laughs> in Tucson. So I just. <laughs> I know. Right? I truly am the black sheep. Uh, it's rough of the family, but I do like to reflect. And one thing that's cool is the field of honor 
at Freeman Park, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial there. Mm -hmm. A thousand flags. Check this out. So it was nice. The weather wasn't really. I mean, there was a, there yeah. were a few moments where it was barbecue worthy mm -hmm. and uh, Totfus Park Funland worthy. Right, that was really fun. There was like a, a glorious hour where there was no wind mm -hmm. and the sun was mostly out. Right, mm -hmm. and so we got to see all the little kitties in the trains, planes, <laughs> and carousels. <laughs> the octopus. Mm -hmm. We rode on the Ferris wheel. Check this out. If you're wondering what the view is like. On the Ferris wheel at Toffus Park in Funland. It was pretty cool. And you know, even though it is a relatively small one, it still freaks me out a little. Like really? we got up there and my tailbone definitely started tingling <laughs> at the height and I was like, Ugh. Like it does. That wasn't high en high up enough for me or I was just looking through the camera to get the footage. But... You know, you were kind of, you were mostly looking yeah. through the camera to be hmm. fair, but... I feel like my definition of heights and your definition of heights is a little different. Uh, okay. Especially because you are... Right. Yeah, you're a pretty tall guy. Yeah, six feet. Yeah, you're... An... I'm completely average in every way. <laughs> it is a little funny, yeah. you know? But anyway, like, the fact that clothes fit you so well pisses me off. Oh, yeah. I'm a 42 regular. Life is really easy for yeah, me. Yeah, it's a bunch of crap. Yeah, when well, I'm not 20 pounds overweight. We'll get there. <laughs> right, it's all good. <laughs> anyway... Sort of funny, though. I think the main reason I wanted to go to Funland was because I was just craving some cotton candy. I had a full-on hankering, you know? Were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. I feel like last night I was sitting in bed watching um, The Boys because <laughs> season four is about to come out. And uh, I was just like, man, I could really go for some freaking cotton candy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you got it, and it was flavor, even though it came in the tub with the plastic on top. Right. Even though it was packaged, you yeah. said it was flavorful. Yeah, it actually, so sometimes when you get it, like the cotton candy and it tastes like styrofoam and it's just gross. Yeah. You... But this one just tasted like good old fashioned cotton candy. And I got the one that had like four different colors and each color was a different flavor, which was really fun. So Toffus Park Funland, you are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5. <laughs> 21 finger gun salute Yippew! and chef's kiss to you. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing inspires confidence like the uh, Ferris wheel rider when he was unloading us. Thank goodness he said it afterwards instead of before. Right. He said, not bad for a 75 year old piece of equipment, huh? I know, right? But I mean, well maintained. And that uh, carousel that we rode, uh -huh. there's a replica of it or a, a twin of it. A twin of it over in DC. In DC. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Little old Idaho Falls. Yeah. Hmm. Some history. And it just looks good. Right. They, they, all the horses jump. Mm -hmm. Walt Disney. All of it's well-maintained. No mm -hmm. chipping paint. Right. And I think they just freshly redid their park benches, too, because their benches are this beautiful bright red. They look great. What's ironic is, you know, windy kind of, I don't want to say crappy weather, but not right. ideal weather mm -hmm. for campers. Oh, did you see the traffic between Blackfoot and Pocatello? Oh, I didn't. They're doing that construction around Fort Hall. There, there's an oh, overpass there that needs redone. Yeah, and it was all oh, Friday. <laughs> there, pro tip: if you're leaving town on Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. maybe leave Thursday night. I don't right. Know. Oh. Or Friday, right in the middle of the workday. I, I think this was Friday, right in the middle of the workday. Really? Everybody had the same idea. That's Ooh, what I'll I'm have saying. To talk to my friend then, because she see how it was? she would have gotten caught in that. Then. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, but then tomorrow it's mm -hmm. going to be like 80. It, right. it was sixties all weekend long. Yeah. Tomorrow it's going to be 80. Cause you know, it's the unofficial start of summer. Mm -hmm. It's the official start of the bison petting competition in Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> Go for it, tourists. You know what? That's <laughs> the thing. At this point, I, I feel like we should just encourage it. Because there's no it, amount of it's stopping It's already them. happened this year, I think. <laughs> I know. I've already seen a mauling video. Yeah, idiots. You know, and no matter how many <laughs> signs they put up and how many languages they do, people still try to pet the fluffy cows and it's like baby cakes. Yeah. That is a foolish move. Don't Please do don't. It. Yeah. At this point, I feel like now they should just have tour guides for Yellowstone where they make everyone in their group hold on to a rope like a bunch of kindergartners. Uh -huh. And they just say, okay, hey, you're not allowed to let go of the rope. If you let go, you get kicked out or something like that. Yeah, so if you're going to they... behave like right, children. Right, because like, then... apparently we can't trust them to be smart adults who understand warnings and take heed. So at this point, I'm, I'm thinking we either treat them like kindergartners or we, you know... Let it happen. Yeah, so I don't think we have the manpower for that. We don't have the park ranger for that. Probably not, but yeah. I mean, unless we got a really long kindergartner rope, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, and in case you're wondering, Funland is closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. 
They're open 11 to 5, Thursday through Sunday, oh, wow. and noon to 8 on Monday. Tickets are a dollar each. Mm-hmm. And then it was what? $3 for the Ferris wheel. Right. Yeah, three like, tickets for the Ferris wheel, three for the octopus, and three for the carousel. And I think only two for the train and two for the airplanes. Yeah, for the little kids. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget the Chuckers. I actually went to that game this weekend. Yeah, they had oh, their opening night was, was it Tuesday or Wednesday of last week? Anyway, Something there like was 1,152 fans. They won wow. seven to six over the <laughs> Missoula Paddleheads in game one of 96. <laughs> <laughs> in the 2024 Pioneer League season. Have you ever considered going into sports commentary? So I, I'm doing, if you know the Chuckers, you know that voice. That That's John Balgini, the voice of the Chuckers. <laughs> uh, John was around when I was a kid. He was on the radio. Right. Uh, he, he's been around for a long time. And I'm pretty sure he emulated Bob Euchre, <laughs> who was the sports announcer for the Milwaukee Brewers. Great guy. Great guy. Uh-huh. But nobody really talks that way. No. Only in cartoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was John Balgini and who was it on QP? It was it was, it was Jean Valjean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that where he got it from? Or was that his real name? <laughs> and then there was Marv Hepworth. And Marv Hepworth got into radio before um probably a small station that didn't have a compressor on the mic oh, or any, yeah? any processing. Uh-huh. So he did it with his voice. And he's still around. He's the guy that does the commercials that sound like this. We call them buyer dyads. Wow, okay. And he just, you you can tell it's this sort of angry affectation <laughs> to get you to motivated to do the thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Sorry. It's a lot of hard work on the throat. <laughs> I can't do it, but he just does it naturally. And the thing is, he doesn't have to mm-hmm. because he's got this, we call them balls. <laughs> he's got the balls. He sounds like this in in person. Wow. Hey Mike, how's it going? <laughs> not just just to be very clear, not bagging on either of these two. They're legends mm-hmm. in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then there's Phil Moon. And Phil, you're in a u- unique category all your own. He's the guy that first put me on the radio. I called in to request a song. <laughs> and I thought that was a fake name. Nope, because he was on at night. Right. And his name is Phil Moon. Yeah. Like full moon. I know. Like, you know, damn well, Snake Rivers on the radio back in the day. That wasn't his real name. No, of course not. Phil Moon's his real name. That's hilarious. (laughs) Yeah, that's, it's just out there enough. Yeah. But I can still believe it. Hey, what are we drinking? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. It's a little something I picked in the I picked up at the Ammon Brolums. Okay. It is a sparkling ice starburst in strawberry flavor. Um, Your favorite. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, you were just complaining today the about the the cotton candy right. was a cherry flavor, and you're like, why do they even make red things cherry flavored yeah. anymore? It yeah. should be strawberry. Absolutely, or watermelon. Yeah. Any other red fruit, you know. Cheers. Cheers, indeed. So Thank these are you. the reason they sparked my interest is they're zero sugar. Mm-hmm. Sparkling ice brand, Starburst strawberry Ooh. flavored, the best flavor. Ooh. That's delicious. Mm. It does taste just like a strawberry Starburst. And the pink ones are my favorite. So you know I'm into this. Wow. Yeah. And it's got vitamins and antioxidants. Is it sucralose or stevia? Mm. It's, anyway. Good question. Because I know there's one that you don't like. That's pretty fantastic. And I think it's the sucralose, right? Or is sucralose and stevia the same thing? I don't know. They might be. Anyway, this is all right. I know. It's not bad. Ooh, it's got green tea extract in it. Mm. Huh. I'll give, I'll give that another sip. Right? That's actually quite nice. <laughs> sucralose. Sucralose. Mm-hmm. Another thing that happened this past week, did you see that there are now more daily marijuana users in the United States than alcohol users? I can believe it. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, especially with the legalization of it. Yeah. I think that I could have seen that coming. Right. Well, and I feel like it's probably a lot easier to monitor that than alcohol because I guess it depends on how you consume it. Because if you're doing edibles, you know how much is in each edible. Yeah. I think regulation is, yeah. Regulation is probably the best thing to happen to that because, you know, I mean, I think if you've ever been marijuana curious. (laughs) Uh, then not to be like a proponent of a drug that is still illegal in Idaho. I'm right. pretty sure we're going to be the last ones in the nation. <sighs> Probably. Or it's just going to be um, given a pass on a federal level. Mm-hmm. 
you know, two things I knew was going were going to happen ten years ago. Right. Legalized gay marriage mm-hmm. and legalized marijuana. Oh yeah, yeah. Too many people dig it. So right. <laughs> you can't stop them. <laughs> but but yeah, like um, you know, if you've got uh, that drink, you made me burp. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the minute I heard it was like being used to treat PTSD, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. everything my parents told me was wrong. Come to find out, mom, she did a little of that, that in the 60s. <laughs> well, I mean, it was the 60s. Everyone did it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like how everyone did cocaine in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> um, except me, I was too young. Yeah. <laughs> I made up for it in my adult life, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kidding. you had plenty of vices. Um, but I'm like, okay, I... I because I actually watched Reefer Madness like in school. Oh, really? Yeah. They showed it to you with the egg and everything. It's a ridiculous <laughs> movie. I recently torrented it. Hilarious. It's you know what? In the public domain by now. I have never seen it, and I would oh, love to. It's hilarious. I bet it is. Yeah. You know what would be really fun huh. for someone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would be to get high and then go watch to Oregon, <laughs> check into a hotel, <laughs> and bring it up on the iPad. Yeah. yeah I think that'd be a good time. <laughs> Hey, on the real tip, did you know that all real estate agents are the same? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> they they do offer a variety of different services. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes you can get so overwhelmed interviewing real estate agents, realtors, that you're like, well, I don't know who to pick. Right. I'll tell you, sometimes it's about who you like working with the most. So if you like listening to this show and you want to see us all business in selling your home, we do that. And I'd like to think that we have a personal insight to the town that maybe not everyone does have. You know, we're very plugged into the community. We want you to enjoy living here. So I think we have some extra motivation to make sure that you find the perfect place for you. Yeah, we grew up here. We know the neighborhoods. We know the current market conditions. We are members of the National Association of Realtors and brokered by Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. Hit us up, info at ifafpod.com or call 208-970-8250. Everyone knows that summer is the time to party. So if you are planning an event or a wedding and you want to do some stuff yourself, but don't want to go through the hassle of buying a bunch of stuff for it, go ahead and check out DIY Weddings and Events. They're East Idaho's largest event decor provider. And don't forget, they've got that drink and treat trailer rental too. Which is so cute. Get just the trailer or get it fully catered. It's up to you. You can get it fully stocked and ready to party if you want or design your event with the trailer own rental option. See, that's what I love most about these guys. It's all about the different levels that you're interested in. You can go in and just get centerpieces or you can have them haul in and decorate for your event for you. Get in touch with our friends at DIY Wedding and Event Rentals, 208-403-2040 today. That's 208-403-2040 or Facebook DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Drop promo code IFAF and save 15%. So aside from the Gator and the McFlurries that we ate last week, we also had another really prime meal, that ribeye from Virgin River Cattle Company. I always get excited when we agree that we're going to make it a Virgin River night. Oh, so fun. And and I'm sorry, the best cut of meat, hands down, I thought was filet mignon. Mm Mm-hmm. Until I had a Virgin River ribeye. I know. It kind of blew my mind. I couldn't believe how buttery it was. You actually asked me, is there butter in this? I thought for sure there had to be. I just cooked it really hot. Either Mm -hmm. I've never cooked a ribeye properly (laughs) or there's something special about these ribeyes. Mm -hmm. You can make it a Virgin River Land and Cattle Company night too. Throw it down on the grill because in 2024, they're now selling smaller orders Hit them up on Facebook. That's Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Proudly shipping to five states now. Idaho, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, and Nevada. That's Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Find them on Facebook and use promo code IFAF to save 15%. So that's what's happened. Now let's talk about what's going to happen. We've already mentioned Mountain Brewers Beer Fest this Saturday, June 1st, noon to 5, Sandy Downs. Um, it's kind of fun to show up around three or four to those things. Oh, really? Yeah. Cause Why is every, that? Because everybody's drunk. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And you can, you know, uh, I, th- I think, do they allow outside water? I think they do. I mean, I would hope so. I've seen people, really smart people, like they'll make a pretzel necklace. Oh. Or 10. Oh. <gasps> 
and sell those. Oh, that's smart. Even better, it should be like Mardi Gras, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where you just toss them. <laughs> now, this was this was 10 years ago, but I did see some of that going on, too. Oh, really? When the band hits the stage. <laughs> okay. A couple shirts came flying up. Good for them. That, I mean, honestly, the confidence is amazing. Yeah, yes. Good for them. <laughs> I think beer does give you confidence. It does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even maybe some people who shouldn't have that much, but you know what? Let's just let them have that for the day. Uh, wasn't it Ben Franklin who said, um, beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy or something? Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. And honestly, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's this Saturday. Lincoln Post for tickets. <laughs> also kind of a cool thing next weekend, downtown after dark. The Downtown Development Corporation, um, this is happening June 7th, mm -hmm. 8 to midnight. Oh, wow. So, so, yeah, if you ever wanted to, you know, sneak around downtown at night, they're doing some kind of – meet them at Park and A Street, uh -huh. I'm assuming right at 8 p.m., for a four-hour late-night shopping and dining experience downtown. Businesses will stay open late. Be one wow. of the first 100 people to get your free swag bag stuffed with fun stuff. That sounds cool. Snake River Animal Shelter offering discounted microchipping at Splash, uh, your I favorite do, pet store. I do love Splash, and I also love Snake River Animal Shelter. That's until and to 10. be fair, Idaho Falls Animal Shelter, too. Yeah. I just love a critter. <laughs> Museum of Idaho offering basement tours. Ooh. What do they got? <gasps> I want to see that. In the basement. Mike, can we go to this? This sounds so fun. Skeletons? Ooh, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, probably. At least probably like a dinosaur museum, skeleton right? or something. Yeah, that sounds kind of fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> They've got Sue down there. <laughs> so that's Saturday, June 8th. <laughs> then looking ahead to next month, Ammon Days, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. They're going to oh, have nice. 16 hot air balloons at McCowan Park. Oh, wow. In the North Field, I think they're going to be set up. Liftoffs happen all three days at 7.30 a.m. I really want to see that. I, I love the idea of a hot air balloon. Yeah. That just sounds really cool. Might have to get some footy, especially of this. The Glow event is happening that Friday uh -huh. at 8.30 p.m. So they wait till dusk-ish. Uh -huh. And then they let, you know, how would they perform a burn where they, you see the operator pull down and it right. releases a flame up into the balloon. Uh-huh. They're all on the ground, I think, but you get to see them kind of light up. That sounds really cool. <laughs> you know. I love that. That sounds magical. The whole bullet, like a light bulb. Uh-huh. Kind of lights up. That's awesome. And they're offering free shuttle service to from Hillcrest. If parking at McCowan Park is too much, and it might be. It might be. Because Amandays is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have a free shuttle running that night, Friday night, for the Glow event from, what, 7 to 10? And then every 20 minutes. Uh, oh, that's every 20 minutes. Then Saturday the 3rd. From 7 to 5 p.m. about every 10 minutes. Man, that's cool. Did that make sense what I said? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Also coming up in August, the Idaho Falls Rotary Club, 33rd Annual Great Snake River Green Belt Duck Race. Got to go for the duck race. They announced the top prizes. Mm -hmm. Grand prize, 2024 Kia Sportage from Stones. Wow. First prize, 2024 Can-Am Outlander XT850 Platinum Silver Four-Wheeler. Oh, okay. <laughs> From ICCU. You know, my mom won't let me drive four wheelers anymore. No? Not after I landed my brother in the hospital oh, for a month. <laughs> right. I yeah. About that. Yeah. Well, we, so my brother and I were driving on one. I was driving it. He told me to slow down. I, being the 13 year old little shit that I was, sped up. We hit a rut just right. He went bouncing off the back. Well, he decided to bail it because we were bouncing off into a valley. And so he tried to jump off but hit a tree right across his gut, lacerated his, lacerated his liver, and killed a foot of in, his intestine. Yikes. Yeah, it was really you gotta bad. you got to be careful on those things. That's why mm -hmm. I think at the end of a lot of four-wheeler or side-by-side -side, um, ads, you'll hear, Honda recommends all ATV riders take a training course. Right. Or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, the funny Thanks. thing with that whole accident, though? All that happened to me was that I broke my toe. <sighs> That's it. Oh, you poor dear. <laughs> How is it? Is it okay? <laughs> you know, actually, it does still hurt if I wear high enough heels for long enough. Yeah. It can you tell that it's going to be a rainy day? You can feel it in your joints? Uh, sometimes Never. a little. <laughs> like, honestly, if that foot does get cold, I can feel it. Sometimes people with, like, old war injuries right. will say, it's going to rain today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the barometric pressure, something. apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucks with it. Yeah. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> right. And then the third prize, a Tika T3X Super Varmint 300 Win Mag with Zeiss Conquest V4 416 by 44 scope. 
Wow, that was a lot of words I didn't understand. I have no idea what I'm saying right now. <laughs> Gun enthusiasts probably do. Oh, that's hot <gasps> shit, man. Uh, and uh, worn Mountain Tech 30 millimeter rings from the gun shop. Nice. Okay. <laughs> but this all goes to the Idaho Falls Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. And they do, like, I was looking at old pictures of the Civic Auditorium, for example. And they, there's the rotary symbol on it. Uh huh. Like, they, they do all sorts of projects. You mm -hmm. owe a lot of the new Greenbelt, the new river walk between Broadway right. and Pancarry Bridges. Mm -hmm. That beautification from the, to the Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. So they do a bunch of great stuff. It's always, you know, get yeah. a quack pack for, I don't know, 25 bucks. Anyway, the They're link is bad. in post. Yeah. Yeah. 25,000 ducks, I think. Damn. That's a lot of ducks. I wonder if it's really hard to clean up afterward. I don't think so. I think they just have a big net after Damn. the falls that catches them all or something. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Nothing like, I guess there was a rubber duck disaster. Have you heard about this? No. Yeah. Like, I don't know, a cargo ship crashed 30 years ago mm -hmm. carrying a bunch of crates of rubber ducks. Oh, funny. And they've actually used them to sort of study yeah, the jet study the streams, currents. their Gulf streams or whatever. Yeah. To, yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> With the, the places where they end up. Yeah. You know what? There's actually a similar one of Legos. Oh, that happened really? where a big uh, cargo ship carrying tons of Legos, uh, you know, ended up losing its cargo. And apparently some of the Legos on there are extre extremely rare because they only existed for that drop and never made it. Oh, wow. So now if you find those pieces, they're like insanely valuable because no, you can't get your hands on them. And that's why we're all 0.7% microplastics, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, bummer. <laughs> Thank you, Lego. <laughs> it's not really just Lego's fault. It's a lot of people's fault. It's China. Bummer. What? It's just so bad. <laughs> Did you see the Saturday Night Live ad for, I think it was Jimu or something? Oh, funny. It was basically, it was a combination, I think of Shine and or Shane. Sheen. 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 And I've Timu, heard it so many Temu. different ways. Well, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but it was hilarious. Well, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal hosted and was in the ad. It's great. Ooh, I do love Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, and I was going to say Timu doesn't even know how to pronounce their stuff because sometimes they say Timu and then sometimes they say Temu. Yeah, the Super Bowl ads this year were Temu. Right. But, but then, like, the YouTube commercial that I get, their jingle goes, ooh, ooh, Timu. Yeah. Okay. So they're just. They, they can't even get their own branding right, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Back to dumb. inconsistent branding that mm -hmm. we were on last week. Right. And the last thing that I saw coming up, I'm so excited for, for two reasons. Oh, really? Is the uh, trailer for the new Beetlejuice. <gasps> oh, yeah? Titled Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Hilarious, by the way. And that's the first reason I'm excited is because that might mean they make a third one because you know what happens when you say that name three times. Right, right. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway. But also, everything's a sequel, and I don't know if I want to hope for another sequel, you know? It's September 6th. The, the reason this is so perfect is Winona Ryder is in it and ageless. Oh, she's beautiful. Michael Keaton is Beetlejuice again. Mm -hmm. Now, he ha if you've seen Birdman, <laughs> he's looking old. But sure. he's got the Beetlejuice makeup on. Right. So he's fine. You can't even tell. Yeah. Directed by Tim Burton and then Jenna Ortega. Who's just beautiful. Who must be the new goth queen because mm -hmm. she got Wednesday Adams and um, the girl in Beetlejuice. I forget her name. Right. Yeah. Oh, also Catherine O'Hara, right? Oh, who, she's going to be in it too? Uh-huh. Oh, that's that's pretty hot. You I remember her from her most recent popular turn on Schitt's Creek. Yes. Oh, she was so good as Moira. I loved her. Herbert Linger's <laughs> fruit wine. <laughs> Hilarious. The funniest part of the show, I thought. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just so good. <laughs> so good. So yeah. very excited for that. Mm-hmm. I'm down. Now, you know I don't watch trailers, so I right. haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And I won't see it. Don't. No, I won't. Don't. I won't. Good. <laughs> Good. Don't. <laughs> so I was in a business last week talking to a guy in the lobby, and the office manager uh, said to the guy, hey, I've got to go, because uh, my kid, I, was there a teacher strike last week with oh, District 91? Yes, I heard or about that. Or a walkout that. or something. Yeah, I did hear about that. But apparently a tentative agreement, you'll be happy to know, has been reached between Idaho Falls School District 91 and the Idaho Falls Education Association. Mm -hmm. A new contract for the 2024-2025 school year coming up, of course, in September, August. She's depending. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Well, and I think that they even like kind of scheduled the like... 
um, strike okay. a little bit so that parents would know to pick up their kids and all that. Yes, like, yes that's why she was leaving. She had to pick right. up her kids. She knew it was going to happen. Right. Well, and it's sort of funny because even when they're striking, they're still like fulfilling <laughs> their duties and making sure the kids are taken care of. Right. And I like I think that speaks so much to how teachers are as a profession. You know, like at the end of the day, they really don't want the kids that they help to suffer, but they also recognize that they got to get paid more, which they totally do. All my kids are grown and out, so I don't Mm -hmm. really deal with teachers anymore, but I have a number of teacher friends on Facebook. Right. And I see what they go through on a Mm -hmm. daily basis. It's tough. It's tough to be a teacher. It is. Well, and just so much of their money goes back into their classroom, you know, helping those kids out and stuff. And the thing that I've the thing that I've always heard from my teacher friends is the kids are fine. It's the parents that suck. <laughs> you know, they got to deal with parents. Well, and that's the worst part. Like you have so much. I I don't want to say control, but control over the kids in the classroom and how their environment is during that time. And you can do so much good with that time. Right. But the second they go home, if their parents suck, there's nothing else you can do. Right. You know, you have to work so hard to undo all of the crap that the parents do to these poor kids. (laughs) People are the worst. People are the worst. In general. Yeah. (laughs) But I'm glad to hear this. The agreement includes an average raise of $2,632. And don't forget the 50 cents Mm -hmm. for area teachers. There's also a one time payment of $300 for full-time staff, mm-hmm. $150 for part-time. Now, it needs to be ratified this week, I guess. Well, I hope it does get ratified because realistically, I'm with sorry. how expensive everything is, the teachers need it and they deserve it. Yeah. Remember, these are the people that have to put up with all the Generation Alpha slang, like Skibbity, <sighs> Sigma, Gyat. Mm-hmm. Um, what am I missing? I know I'm missing a few. I'm sure we are. <laughs> oh, Riz. Uh, Riz. I Rizzler. think that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, Rizzly Bear. <laughs> And did I sense an injustice over the weekend? Did we see this unfold? Yeah. Uh, this is kind of an interesting little story. Now, I'm, I'm not very much sports ball-y. Me either. Yes. <laughs> but there's an organization <laughs> yeah, called Friday Night Flag. Mm-hmm. They're no contact football for K through 8th. Right. It'd be kind of cool to see kindergartners <laughs> playing flag football. Not going to lie. I know, right? I think that, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. They're just so little. They're stubby little legs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I guess, so they got an email from the Parks and Rec Department right before their championship game, mm-hmm. canceling uh, their appearance at, is it Community Park? Citing issues like parking and stuff, stuff that they're trying to iron out. And maybe by the time this hits on Memorial Day, by the uh-huh. time our show launches, this will all be resolved. Gee, I hope so. Yeah, I would hope so too. But uh, some issue over parking, the main guy or person at Friday Night Flags said it costs us $10,000 for 14 park rentals for our season. We scheduled this in February. Uh Uh-huh. Here it is three, four months later. Gets Mm -hmm. canceled right before the championship. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. Something's not cool. Ron Swanson ain't doing his job over at Parks and Rec. Right, right. Like, it just makes you wonder what exactly happened. We'll link to the post here. I'm not exactly sure of the city's side of the story, but it kind of sounds like this is the second time now, according to Friday Night Flag, Mm -hmm. that their game has been canceled. And Well, and it's weird that it's happening so last minute. Yeah. You know, like what could compel them to cancel so close to the game? Yeah, the city has offered no alternative. Really? Kind of like, screw you guys. Like imagine paying for something and everybody's excited. Right. And And all these kids. The venue just gets canceled. That sucks. Did they at least get their money back? I don't know. Ooh, if they didn't get their money back, then that would be... Even worse. And I guess the the plot thickens a little bit because the city also has a flag football league. Oh, really? That is, I don't know, competing with Friday Night Flag. Oh. Even though Friday Night Flag is like five times as big. Right. Huh. So is that part of it? I mean, obviously, if the city doesn't speak up, we're going to assume that we're going to search for factors Right. As to why they would do something like this. See, and that competition, I think, would explain some of it. You know, because why else would they, like, they had the plan back in February. 
Unless there was something catastrophic that happened to the park, like a meteor hit in the middle of the field, and now they have to do maintenance. Yeah. That's the only reason I could think where they would cancel so last minute, so close to the actual game. They've even asked about using the um, old Butte Road soccer complex. It's just, uh -huh. a, it's, it's a huge grassy area. I mean, it's a lot of room. Right. The city was saying something like, oh, we're, we're afraid our field is going to get torn up. How can kindergartners or even eighth graders playing flag football tear the field up more than playing soccer? Are football yeah. cleats and soccer cleats that much different? Well, they are different. If you want to know more, we'll share their post on our description like we do. We put links for almost everything we talk about at the bottom. Yeah, you're really good about that. Uh, I try to be, mm -hmm. but they're basically asking for help mm -hmm. to email people at the um, Parks and Rec Department, Idaho Falls City Council, even Mayor Rebecca Casper mm -hmm. got their email addresses all here. Considering how many parks and stuff we have in this town, I can't think of any reason that we should have this many disappointed kids. We have five high school Football fields. Right. Not to mention all of the Good. elementary football fields. Right. You know, and kids just go and tear those things up every day. There's no reason they should be worried about that. Yeah. You know? If my yard was big enough, you guys. Right. <laughs> and if there was enough parking on your street. Right. Yeah. Two more things before we get to grilling and chilling like a villain. Um, did people still say people do not say that anymore? I say it, but I'm a dork, <laughs> so you probably shouldn't. <laughs> people that say chilling like a villain probably also say you're the bomb.com. Guilty. <laughs> and? Or that's my jam. <laughs> and? Like turn of the century colloquialisms. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you coming directly for me? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two more things. One, we'd say this is sort of like a PSA, public service yeah. announcement. Yeah, lay it on me. You cannot grant other drivers the right of way. No, of course not. Have you ever had, like, maybe That's... let's say you were turning right onto Hit or 17th, mm -hmm. pretty busy road. Right. And have another, you're coming out of a parking lot, mm -hmm. had another driver stop, stop traffic, and, and kind of wave you out. Right. They don't know where you're going. Right. You might need to be getting into the left-hand lane. Uh-huh. Right. Or you may be turning left. Mm -hmm. If there's four lanes of traffic and one driver stops for you, here's what the PSA says. Let's throw it up here. It's from XKCD Comics. Mm -hmm. And I will like, say, too, one thing I hate about that is when they're stubborn about it. Right. Like, they wave you, and then you wave them saying, no, dude, this isn't going to work for me. Go. And You like, try your no, sign no, no. language pointing. Right. When one driver in four or five lanes of traffic, counting the turn lane, s decides to stop and grant you the right of way, they don't know where you're going. What did it say? If someone waves you out, assume they are an assassin sent from the future to kill you <laughs> and make it look like an accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. And yeah, that's a great way to get into a car accident. This is a great problem to have. Mm -hmm. In Idaho Falls, we seem to, I seem to get into polite contests with a lot of drivers. <laughs> I think that's true. At a four-way stop, for example. Right. When I roll up to a four-way stop and I know it's a four-way stop, mm -hmm. I'm looking around going, okay, what cars were here before me? Right. After they all go, then I can go. Mm -hmm. But then you've got a guy who got there before you. It's mm -hmm. his turn to go. And he's like, yeah, come on, dude. And it's not a big, sometimes big semi trucks do that. And I get that. Right. Yeah. Cause they're going to take forever and yes. it takes time for them to get going. Sure. That's fine. And I, I just assume that they're more aware of the road than I am. Especially cause they've actually got a high profile vehicle so they can look up and around yeah. like, you, you know, Simba and Mufasa looking over Pred Rock. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> I'm the bottom of the Ferris wheel. Right. They're the top. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really frustrating to me when I see people do that mm -hmm. because you could pull out and then get creamed. Yes. By another car. In fact, one thing that I've started doing when I see a car slow down on a street and they're not signaling, mm -hmm. I always slow down too because I assume they're stopping for a four year old toddler in the middle of the road. Right. Which is totally or a happened cat before or a too. squirrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was one time my dad was on this like 50 miles per hour road and out of nowhere, like as he was, and it was like dusk. So it was kind of dark, but as he started down the road, a kid, like maybe three years old, a toddler Scary. in like a diaper and a t-shirt standing in the middle of the road. 
And S- thankfully, speaking of terrible parents, <laughs> right? And thankfully, he stopped and returned the kid to the like one house on the road. Which also, dude, you know that that road is right in front of your house. How are you not eagle eyeing those kids all the time? This, yeah, this has pet cemetery written all over it. Spoiler right? alert. Yeah. yeah. The moral of the story, kids, is don't be polite. Be predictable. Right. Right? Yes. I think that's a great way of putting it. That makes well, all and, the sense in the world. And you've told me this saying that your dad told you, Mike, you can be right and also be dead. Yes. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, the best thing that you can do as a driver is be predictable so that people can be right and not be dead. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but Idaho Falls, stop being so polite. Yeah. Be <laughs> assholes for a second. Care about yourself. Be more like the drivers in L.A. Don't be polite. Be predictable. <laughs> right. I think that's a great way of putting it's a safety it. safety issue. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's not to be confused with the other rule, don't block the intersection. Mm-hmm. When there's cross traffic, that's a different story. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Like coming out of the fireworks on July 4th, mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of that. Yep. You know, where some dumbass doesn't, he's not watching both the light in front of him and the car in front of him mm-hmm. to see if there's enough room for him to make it through the intersection and be clear of the intersection. Right, right. All right. Have we bitched enough about that? You and another thing. Actually, I do have another thing. Oh, okay. Hi, welcome to Carly's Driving School. <laughs> All right. There's, School me. <laughs> there's nothing that pisses me off more, and I mean this, than the people who are driving down the road and decide to slow down before getting in the turning lane. What do you think that turning lane is for, my guy? The whole point of the turning lane is to not interrupt the flow of traffic. So if you slow down to get into the turning lane, you're interrupting the flow of traffic. Without signaling. And not using it properly. Also, slower traffic, keep right. (sighs) Right. What if a guy behind you is a maniac going 10 over the speed limit? You are, by definition, slower traffic. Right. So get your ass over to the right. <sighs> Gets me heated. Do we need a cool down? Here, let's have a <laughs> let's have a drink of this tasty sparkling ice yeah, star- you know starburst strawberry zero sugar. That might make me a little sweeter. <laughs> Delicious. Just fantastic. Thanks for this. Where'd you get them again? Brolems and mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, those are nice. One it's last so thing. summary. And we're just so excited for this. No idea what we're doing with it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this, though. They're uh, sold out. They're selling for 300 bucks on eBay. We spent 50 bucks last summer. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the weird Barbie. Take a look. She's just great. Now, you know, back in my day, you Mm -hmm. had to make your own weird Barbie. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I actually really didn't have any weird Barbies. I kept all of mine pretty pristine because I loved my Barbies. You weren't the Sid from Toy Story? No, I didn't really do anything. If one of my Barbies got damaged, it was a horrible day for me. I was so sad, especially because my parents weren't going to go out and buy me another one. I had a limited supply and I had to keep them as nice as I could so I could grow my Barbie family and actually like put together scenes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, you'll notice it's branded as Barbie the movie. The back says, greetings from Barbie land, wishing you the best day ever. And then what is this? It looks like the back has been stamped with a number. Mm -hmm. I had to use the macro function on my camera to zoom in enough. I think it's Mm 047412. So 47,412. Should we give away that number? Do you think that people could like deep fake their weird Barbie? I don't know. (laughs) It certainly isn't number one. No, (laughs) no. But it's in the first 50,000. Which is pretty cool. And you you brought it, you made the observation that you really appreciated how fully articulated she was. She comes yes. in the box with her leg all the way up in the air. Which I love. I think that's super funny. And you see she's got a joint on her wrist. Uh-huh. Well, so here's the thing. Usually with Barbies, when they do the um the elbows and the knees, they'll do one joint. And that means that you can only bend it about to probably like a 40 degree angle, you know, maybe like a 35 degree angle. So you can't get it fully in like actual arms can do. Now in this one, they've actually done, they've done two joints in it so that it can actually go all the way in like an actual arm. The Barbie scientists really checked their hypotenuses on this one. They really did. And I'm guessing her knees are also like that. You can't tell because she's wearing pants, but I bet her knees are too, which means that she could fully sit on her feet. Super cute. Thought we'd share. That's Mm -hmm. our show. We're going to get to grilling. Like and subscribe anywhere and everywhere. If you're watching, you can listen in your car or take us out to uh, your grill Mm -hmm. on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all those. If you're listening, remember, you can always watch the stuff we're talking about on YouTube and Facebook.
We're going to go ahead and leave you with some footage from the Field of Honor at Freeman Park this year. So pretty.